Hello everyone, uh, my name is Paul Stevens and I'm thrilled to welcome you to this short-term rentals webinar on thriving in short-term booking windows sponsored by Wednesday. I'm the editor of short-term rentals here at HM and I'm also the host for today's session. Uh, before we begin, uh, let's introduce our webinar sponsor, uh, Wimstay, and we'll get their CEO, uh, David, who is speaking today, just to introduce yourself uh, first, David, uh, and your company. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having us. Um, we are the OTA for last-minute bookings of short-term rentals. We offer the best value to guests searching for those types of stays, and we book more nights for property managers uh, that would have otherwise, you know, gone unrented. Thanks for having us. Fantastic. And yeah, thank you very much, David, and to all of your team. Uh, we're delighted to have you uh, sponsoring uh, this session. And we've got a great session ahead of us. Um, so in terms of uh, guidelines for today, please keep your sound on mute and your camera off if you're not a speaker. All of the details will be posted in the chat by my colleagues, Joe and Danny. So please do post any questions you have there yourselves throughout today's webinar. Our discussion will last around 45 minutes before we move on to some audience questions. And finally, a recording will also be sent around to everyone within 48 hours after today's session. So let's introduce uh, the rest of our speaker lineup for today. And we'll kick off, please, with Mike from Inhabit. Howdy, howdy. So my name is Mike Mears. I'm a, the uh, Partnerships Director for the Inhabit uh, brand ecosystem. Our team's mission is really to create a success story that creates a healthy 365 degree uh, set of revenue streams for our partners our travelers, and then Inhabit's ecosystem of brands. And so currently, the way that it looks is Inhabit uh, owns brands like Streamline, LiveRes, VRM, uh, iTrip, Blue Tent, things like that as well. And uh, Wimstay is one of our greatest partners um, to date. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Mike. And I'm loving the uh, background. We were talking a bit about it uh, off camera there. And uh... Yes, it's all I'm, fake. I'm, I'm not sure if there's going to be a chance for, for singing um, today, but um, we won't rule it out. <laughs> um, Fair enough. And finally, we've got Andrew from Wheelhouse. Please introduce yourself. Hi, all. I'm Andrew from Wheelhouse. Wheelhouse focuses on building pricing and revenue management tools for the short-term rental space. Excited to be hanging out with a great crew today. I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> And we've actually just come off a podcast as well, uh, Andrew. So I'm sure, I think you're all warmed up. <laughs> Ready thank to you, go. Thank you to, to all three of you uh, and looking forward to this discussion. So just to add uh, some context for today, we've covered Wednesday uh, a number of times before on short-term rentals, from David's appointment as CEO back in January to the company's $10 million equity financing round back in April as well as partnerships with uh, a number of operators, including the CASA and Turnkey Vacation Rentals. So this will be very much the, uh, the framework for our discussion today around thriving in short-term booking windows. So uh, let's get the discussion started. I should actually say to everyone, if you want to ask any questions of our panel at any time, uh, we'll have plenty of time at the end to, to ask them. So please do uh, pop them in the chat throughout. Um, we'll kick things off, though, with uh, David. Firstly, um, you know, we've said that you were uh, just appointed CEO back in, in January. So uh, congratulations on that and for what you're achieving at Wednesday. Could you first just start actually by clarifying what, what we actually mean by, by last minute and then putting that in the context of, of how you're seeing the booking windows change in, in time? Sure. Well, different property managers define it a bit differently. I think most might define it as two weeks. We define last minute bookings as 30 days prior to the stay because we've built our entire uh, value prop and, and, and uh, product offering to suit something specific and, and provide exclusive discounts in that window. Over the past year, booking windows have tightened. We see occupancy, ADR, average booking value, and RevPAR trending downwards. Property managers, for the most part, are more willing to utilize all the tools in the shed and all the arrows in the quiver uh, to book available nights because 
we see more available nights on the forward calendar than many property managers uh, would like to uh, would like to see at this point in the year. Good timing for us. Yeah, what, what, what exactly is, is the impact that you're seeing on, on property managers from, from this? Well, the impact is it's harder to forecast the business uh, because such a larger percentage of their bookings are coming in that shorter window. Having said that, we provide the tools and the uh, and expertise to fill more of those nights that may have otherwise stayed vacant. And um, I know you've also got some some very interesting data that I think we can get you to share. So looking really at the percentages of people booking it, how far in advance of, of their stays as well. Well, we're somewhat unique in that 80 to 85 percent of Women's Day users book inside of 30, uh, 30 days in any market environment, plus or minus. So 60 percent of our users book two weeks prior to the stay, 20 percent book three or four weeks prior to uh, to the arrival and 20% book beyond the 20% of our users book beyond the 30 day window often for uh, uh, often during shoulder seasons and off seasons. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much, David. Um, we'll move on to uh, to Mike now as well. Um, Mike, you've talked about some of the things that you're you're doing at Inhabit as well. You've got I mean, you just acquired LMPM in March. You've also got the likes of Streamline, Live Res. CRM super control blue tent within your within your portfolio. You've had investment recently as well, so this puts you in, in, in a good position to answer this next question. What are you seeing from um, you know your clients in terms of, of booking windows at the moment? Are you, are you seeing similar to what what David's seeing? Yeah, no, it's a great question. You know, I, we were just talking about this uh, previously, right before we started this, and it feels more like a year of experimentation when it comes to bookings than it does the straightforwardness that's been there in the past, be it shorter term trends or longer term trends or whatnot. We're starting to see people split stays, which is what makes things very interesting. So, you know, as an example, let's say you had a property that, you know, was 600 bucks a night and, you know, there was a two or three day booking window where you could get it, you know, clients are willing to book that home or that property and then leave and go down the street and stay somewhere else to complete their stay. And so that's become quite an interesting thing to see from a couple of reasons. One is because people want to travel, right? Second, they may be on a budget. You've got the inflation stuff, post-COVID, jobs, however you want to kind of spin that. You know, people are a little bit more budget con conscious and they're willing to front or back load a stay in order to kind of round it out within a budget that they want to stick within. So it's some of the stuff that we're starting to see. It's like, so as much as um, as people seem to feel really knee jerky about the fact that the ADRs are starting to lower, sorry, uh, daily rates, right? Average daily rates are starting to lower. You know, this is all ebb and flow at this point. You know, we're going to see this 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 come back up at some point, whether it's at the end of the year or the beginning of the year or whatever. But regardless, during this time, people are still booking. In fact, net bookings seem to be up. It's just that the ADR is down a little bit because we're just sitting in a little bit of a lull. So it's not anything really to be concerned about what you should be doing. And this is what we've been kind of coaching all of our brands to do is be proactive on how you tell the story on the listings that you're putting out there. So if you've got unique amenities, you've got unique things you're near, anything you can talk about property wise on giving that little bit of sense of urgency to book could be photos, could be anything like that. Tell a story. Don't just be somebody who puts up a pretty property. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you mentioned about travelers being more, more budget conscious. This isn't something that's unique to the, the States or certain markets, et cetera. But do you think travel is very much one of those things that people are not going to compromise on when it comes to traveling and, and and how is that maybe affecting booking windows i mean as far as we're compromising people are going to travel i mean i think that that statement is fair they're going to travel whether they stay at a holiday inn or they stay at a mansion you know on, on wednesday right at the end of the day you know people do need to get out i need to get out i got two little boys at the house you know i, I trust me i need a break from time to time you know that's just <laughs> that's the human nature right um, so that's, that's something that I think people need to be reminded of a lot of times when they see some of these changes in the industry and they feel like, oh man, where are we going with this is that travel is never going to go anywhere. It may just change and go in different directions from time to time, but the roller coaster always ends up back at the stop again to get back on and add new people. You know what I mean? Like this, this is going to continue to move. Hmm. Um, and so, you know, like I said, right now we may be just in, in a, in a position where, you know, people are just 
coming back in, they're coming out of uh, places where they, there may have been some unemployment, they're getting their feet back underneath them, you know, this just may be the year where they're still kind of getting their feet wet back up to, you know, being at a standard where they want to live at this point. So you're going to see the market react to what the behaviors are with the travelers at the end of the day. And as that confidence continues to build back, we'll see those numbers increase as well. Um, that's really my two cents on it. And this is just kind of what we've been seeing too. And, and I think that really to capitalize all of that and wrap it into a bow, the most important thing you can do on anything listing wise at this point is, like I said, put the experience first and foremost. What are you giving somebody that's going to put a smile on their face? It could be literally a photo in front of a pool that overlooks the beach with two glasses of wine sitting on the table. That right there alone is an emotional, it, it's an emotional knee jerk. Mm -hmm. People are going to see that and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I, I need to be right there right now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's the moment. That's all it takes. That's what it takes for them to click that booking button. So mm -hmm. tell your story. Fantastic. And, and quite an optimistic outlook, um, which we, we will want to hear, of course. So um, thank you very much, Mike. Let's turn our, our attention to Andrew as well next, because, you know, we, we talked, we were just doing a podcast uh, literally a half an hour, an hour ago before this as well. And talking about how what a busy time it's been for, for Wheelhouse. You've raised $16 million in funding last year and in increasing your revenue management capabilities. What are you seeing in terms of booking window trends right now at Wheelhouse? Sure. I'm going to start with a really bland statement, which is that the booking window is shortening for certain assets in certain markets. Um, but let's let's I, I think it's important to maybe put that in context. So COVID was a, a huge shift in booking windows in everyone's market, right? In urban markets, you're starting to see things like uh, there were certain markets um, like Cape Town where something like 60% of all bookings were happening within the last three days during COVID. In the American market and drive to destinations, you started to see a crazy pattern where the booking window shifted really far into the future because people wanted to travel to a destination. They were staying for a longer time. So that booking window in, in the kind of large U.S. vacation rental markets extended. Probably larger than its... Uh, I don't know if we'll ever get that big again. And now we are seeing in certain markets where the booking window is shrinking. I'm referring mostly to those U.S. markets again. And what, what I don't know yet, what we don't know yet, is, is this driven by, are people actually high, are they keeping pricing higher longer? And therefore, consumers are, are you know, if we're looking at kind of the summer months right now, July, August, et cetera, which are pacing behind. Are people holding prices longer because they got better prices the last couple of years and they're going to have to drop prices more aggressively to drive occupancy? Don't know, but that would change the booking window. Part two is our booking window is still way different than the hotel space, right? When you look at someone like Hotel Tonight, one of my favorite things um, that they used to say, and David, you might see something similar, although totally different categories, is they're saying with, with the rise of Hotel Tonight, you started to see people make hotel reservations from the hotel lobby. That was a little bit different. So one of my questions is during COVID, did so many new, maybe younger travelers or did so many new consumers adopt this inventory type and they just have booking patterns where they make their plans later? I don't think that's crazy. I, I think, David, that'd be a really interesting thing I'd love to kind of unpack with you is like, who, who is driving this booking window change right now and how should we think about it? Um, but yeah, booking windows are shortening, very bland statement, totally depends on inventory type and market. Don't know yet what's driving it. They, they, well, you want it? <laughs> I, and now I'm concerned about uh, guests potentially making bookings from inside the rental. <laughs> the driveway, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully yeah. the driveway, not, yeah. The whole, I got to divert all of our risk ops to uh, to that. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> uh, you know, we're, we're definitely seeing more diverse groups book last minute. And so, you know, 40% of our users are 30 years old and younger, 40% are 31 uh, to 50, uh, and 20% are 51 and older. Uh, and, and so 59% are female, 63% are mobile. We rent units of all shapes, sizes, and price points. So $100 ADR and lower to $1,000 ADR and much higher guests searching for uh, properties in and around beaches, mountains, lakes, cabins um, are, are all being filled. And so we're, fi we're finding that a, a broad, diverse user group, not surprisingly, just given the overall trend, are booking in our window. Uh, and they're just looking for different things. And they're diff different discounts apply to a higher end property than they might to a uh, 
uh, to a property that uh, uh, is is targeted towards a more budget conscious, you know, travel. But for the most part, we're just seeing a much broader group of of travelers book in these uh, book in these windows. Um, you know, we have got a presence across North America. We uh, plan to launch into Europe and Australia in the not too distant uh, future. Uh, but I would just say there's there's a more diverse mix of of folks booking in 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 uh, in our window. <laughs> you you broke in, into a couple of questions actually that I'm going to get on to um, shortly, David. But um, it, it's that's all good anyway because you you talk about these diverse user groups. How, how are you seeing these sort of vary by you know age or or gender or, or even like the technology that people are looking through? Yeah. Well, as I as I said um, uh, 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 just a, just a second ago, um, forty percent are thirty years uh, old and uh, and younger. Forty percent are in that thirty one to fifty range, and and twenty uh, percent uh, are fifty one and older. Um, but maybe I'll transition to sort of how we target these guests, where however they may be and wherever they may fall on the spectrum. Um, everything that we do as a company, every day, all day is focused around booking great deals on last minute on last on last minute stays. Uh, and so the users or I should say the guests at the very top of our marketing funnel are associating Wimstay more and more with best value on last minute trips. Users are beginning to trust us a bit more. Uh, they're beginning to book with us a bit more. Uh, and on top of that, we market, region, destination, property type, live local events, um, uh, individual property managers, individual property managers' uh, properties. Um, and we market to um, select demographics and what a guest, what a particular guest wants. And for us, when you mash all that stuff together, uh, bookings are, are up for us 200% versus last year, uh, year to date. And as of yesterday, uh, bookings are up over 300, June bookings are up over 300% versus last year. And the coolest thing about that growth for us uh, is unlike last year, 100% of the bookings we've generated this year have come through organic and direct search at higher conversion rates. And so larger, degrees, larger diverse group of travelers booking stays and honing some unique ability for us to find those travelers and match to the perfect property that they're looking for last minute, which you know is not an easy thing to do. Thank you very much uh, for that, David. And great to hear that with 200% booking, bookings up at the moment. Have I got that right? I can confirm that as well on my end. We're seeing some pretty <laughs> big growth from those guys. <laughs> um, Andrew, just going back to, um, I, th I think you made a really interesting um, case study there with, with Cape Town as well. Is that, um, I can't remember the exact, was it 30% of, of people booking last minute or I can't remember what it was. But um, it, it was during COVID, it was something like 60% of the market was booking or of listings were booking in the last three days. Yeah. It was an extreme, I mean, that was the extreme case of skew of kind of travel patterns skewing mm. in the urban environment, mm. um, which was emblematic again of like, there was just a big rejiggering of booking windows during COVID and they're changing again. They always are shifting around. You know, some people say, it's, you know, the current economy in the U S is changing the booking window. I'm arguing it could be consumer trends. What's very interesting about what David just shared about the diversity of people who are booking on Wednesday. What I like about that a lot, David, is that it kind of illustrates that a broad group of people have become comfortable with the notion that these properties are well-maintained enough where if they book a property last minute, they're going to be well-serviced. They're going to be taken care of. Um, so I think that's a pretty fascinating uh, stat about the breadth of people who are adopting Wednesday in particular. And some of it has to do with just the fact that, you know, we're only listing units for uh, professional property managers at this point. And so we market the fact that a guest who books on Wednesday will likely enjoy a more curated, localized, relationship-based, safe, and consistent experience than maybe some other channels. And we we weave that piece of it in, which 
certainly helps uh, along the lines of, uh, you know, that last minute booking and any, any concerns someone might have. In addition to that, in addition, I would say too, that, you know, a company is like, we've spent quite a bit of time and dollars on knowing who those guests are and having all the risk controls in place. So not only are we satisfying the traveler's uh, need to get comfortable, but we're doing quite a bit in the background to keep our property manager uh, partners comfortable that if we take a booking three days before the stay, everything is going to go according to plan uh, during that stay three days later. Thank you, and David, as well. And, and, and Andrew, so back, back to that last point as well. If, if you use like the Cape, Cape Town for, as an example, you know, what, what is that showing you know, since then? What does that show about uh, last minute bookings in, in urban markets or, or even looking further afield at which guest demographics are booking? Um, these sorts of trips. Yeah, I don't, I could pull up that data right now. Cape Town, I almost guarantee you the, that lead time was so skewed that it's almost certainly lengthened. Um, I, I don't have that specifically. And when right now, when we're looking at lead time, I was mentioning the kind of the U S some of the major U S markets, uh, since they're pacing behind where they did last year, for example, um, that almost by definition means either occupancy is going to be down or the lead time is going to shrink. Fantastic. Right. So that's where, um, again, I, I don't know yet what to infer from those patterns though. Again, is it just, is the economy shifting in such a way that occupancy is going to drop or are, has a new swath of travelers come in who are booking later? Mm -hmm. Or um, I, I would just say we'd have to get much more precise with the data, I'd have to get a little more precise with that to be able to answer that question definitively, yeah. which is I'm interested in what David shared yeah. around their travel patterns. And another element for us, I would say that it certainly contributed to 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 our uh, progress over the past year is is we've spent quite a bit of time on selling the value of the stay to that guest, meaning the total. Uh, the total dollars coming out of my pocket for that stay. And so there's a number of factors that's still sometimes confusing to folks. There's nightly rate and there's fees and there's guest service fees and there's taxes and there's all this stuff. Uh, but we focus on uh, on our stays, the, the stays that guest book, the total dollars coming out of that pocket, the total amount of the stay is going to be cheaper than the larger sites uh, for whatever that's worth, where ADR and nightly rate is an important component of it. Uh, but we're finding that consumers are, at least on our platform, are locking into this, this total number, this total dollar value number of savings, which is helping to drive not just the you know, the more budget conscious traveler, but the higher end traveler, because those numbers become really significant. And so even if the discount is at zero for a high-end property or, or at a slight discount, the total value that we present to the consumer is lower. And I think that's helping to bring in maybe some folks who are booking last minute uh, on our platform that maybe weren't booking last minute in 2021 or 2022. Yeah. Um, I mean, one other thing I'd, I'd add to that too as well, David, and one of the things that you guys did that I think is quite smart, at least from the user experience is you put the fact that you can split that payment out first and foremost at the very beginning. That's going to catch somebody off guard pretty quickly when they are budget conscious like that. And they start realizing, oh, I can have, you know, we're going with the neighbors next door. We can definitely just get this knocked out in one shot, split it up. And they don't have to have that pain point of feeling like they got to eat the whole thing and then find a way to recoup it from everybody later. Like that's that's a really big confidence builder. And um Sorry, uh, we, we've got a question there from Patrick McDermott. Um, yes, there will be a recording um, sent round after the session. So as long as you've signed up to the session, you will record, you will receive that within 48 hours. Um, just, just expanding on a couple of really interesting points you've made there as well. Um, Mike, what sort of guest demographics are you seeing booking last minute trips specifically? Funny enough, it used last minute trips used to be kind of more of the girl guys weekend kind of like small groups. Let's just go do something and get out of the house kind of thing. But we're starting to see the bigger groups coming in now. We're starting to see families, things like that, where, you know, either people, you know, they got settled into a new job or bonus structures came back. Or there's a couple of different things that happen. Right. So they find out last minute that they're going to have this extra little pot of money that they can use to put towards a vacation. So you're seeing some of these bigger groups coming back into the fold. Um I don't know how long or if that'll last forever being at a knee jerk status that it is right now. It just happens to be, I think right now from what we're seeing, we're seeing those groups of four to six 
um, booking how the two to threes used to book, I'd say, you know, previous year and year before, at least from what we're seeing from our standpoint. Um, you know, like I said, it's a, it could be down to value. It could be down to splitting it between your neighbors next door and finding a way to afford this. There's a couple of different ways to kind of look at it, but the group size seems to have gone up a little bit when it comes to the last minute stuff. And, and another thing that we're, we're seeing, um, and a lot of this is sort of educated guests as opposed to specific science, but it seems as though, at least on our platform, uh, we are taking quite a bit of this leisure type of traffic, which has just has a tendency to book last minute anyway, where someone has a work trip in, next week, and they say, and it's in a decent place. Uh, so they'll like either extend it for a few days or take it longer. It'll it'll qualify as a last minute booking in our in our uh, in our uh, in our categories. But we we we're starting to sort of start to um, as much as we can isolate what those trips are, and they're definitely making a, a larger component of of uh, of our our volume than they may have in the last year or two. Mm. Uh, thank you uh, to to Mike for that, and 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 to David as well. We again lots of lots of really interesting aspects there to pick up on um, i'd really like just to get a bit of a sense of um we mentioned in in, in the context before the webinar about uh, the 10 million equity financing you've had as well so based, basing around that how would you say you've, you've been able to build up your your presence around north america and you've now got the exciting news about the expansion into europe next year what, what's that going to allow you to do on top of what you're doing now well, to some degree, I'm a little surprised by it. When I first told some friends about my uh, my interest in, in joining, you know, Wimps Day, you know, many were like, you realize there's like some other larger companies in the space and they've got some resources that they put towards marketing and other things. But one of the things I'm most proud of, uh, and, and the company had done an awesome job even before I, I, I joined in August of last year, is we've been extremely, extremely capital efficient in uh, how we've grown the business and how we've established partnerships and how we've uh, executed on our marketing strategy. Um, we spent a large sum of money last year on paid media, more than I'd care to admit. And so we've done things like improved the product, the guest engagement and search experience and lots of other things across functions to be able to say, we need to be able in the short term, drive traffic and drive bookings in just smarter, more capital efficient ways. And the team, we have an amazing team. I walked into a company that had this amazing team. We've hired new people. And have we found ways in each areas to be more capital efficient than I even thought in the beginning we could be as a result of some of the things we, we had put together. So this is a capital intensive business, no matter how you slice it, uh, but our focus, I think the, the big thing too is keeping us very focused on a very specific thing that we're not trying to compete against these larger firms. That would be a bit uh, insane. You know, I've said this before, if those larger firms are the Army and the Navy and the Air Force Marines, you know, we're a SEAL Team 6 team that has <laughs> developed a very specific set of skills to conduct specific type of missions and uh, the budget that's re required for a, a, a one of those types of teams is is slightly smaller than uh, you know, the U.S. Armed Forces. And, and that slogan as well you mentioned about seize the stay, that, that very much sort of enforces that meaning, would you say? Uh, completely. You know, seize the stay. I mean, it kind of tie. first of all, I think it's just a great, it's just a great line. Um, it also was in place before before I got there. But it, it it also ties into last minute and you see something and you and what we're finding too is that it tied into the the last minute kind of booking trend uh, but I think it also focuses on what they're able to do on, on our site that might be just a little bit different than what they might be able to do on other, other larger other, other larger sites. Thank you very much, um, yeah. David, there. Um, let's look into actually when it comes to booking last minute um, trips as well, and what, um, whether it's Wimsday or whether other companies as well, what they're employing in terms of pricing, discounts or incentives. So um, I'll turn to Andrew for this one. And you know, what are you seeing in, in, in the market with wheelhouse? Does one of the, I think one of the sort of preconceived ideas as well, that dropping price as well will improve the likelihood of, of bookings. Is that something you would concur with? hundred percent true. Yeah. The, the, I mean, the premise of a dynamic pricing system is that you can change pricing to impact 
expected book, bookings and therefore expected occupancy. So I think the interesting thing that I'm chewing on as I hear this discussion is um, when you look at the traditional OTAs, you'll basically see that your likelihood to book increases generally as your price comes down to a point, to a point. And after a certain point, and it's actually about 15% to 20% below what we kind of like a recommended base price, so to speak, the booking curve flattens. And what that means in plain English is that dropping your price another dollar doesn't increase your likelihood to book. It does not increase your likelihood to book, which means you're literally just leaving money on the table. Now, why does that happen? Again, I have to uh, offer the awkward answer is we don't know, but it might be that people start to think like, maybe this listing isn't real, or maybe there's something wrong with it that I don't understand if the price is being discounted so heavily. That's like, you know, a not, a not unusual consumer behavior. So what I'm fascinated by, about with Wimstay and their focus on the operational piece is if it's perceived as a value as opposed to maybe a, a risk on a traditional OTA to have the price at a particular point, operators should probably move, you know, move on to Wimstay where you have a channel that can actually sell that supply, right? So they're illustrating a new way to move supply at a better price for operators. And I think that's what's driving that, David, I have to think is the brand and the execution around that brand and the messaging and the fact that you work with professional operators because, um, again, the ability for someone to drive prices lower and expect higher occupancy uh, has some limits on traditional, I'll call them traditional, OTAs. Well, first of all, you're hired. And okay. Mike, too, I think this is the <laughs> I, I, I swear I'm not here to do anything other than I'm just hired on this unpacking call. this with you. And it's fascinating um, to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, 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 that's funny. The, um, you know, I, I would say that, um, Say that last. Say that last piece one more time, a Andrew. Um, okay. okay. So, so on 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 eight years ago, when we were looking at like proving that pricing could be done for the category, we saw this interesting thing, which is at some point dropping price doesn't increase your likelihood to book, mm -hmm. which means discounting past a certain percentage actually impacts your revenue. You shouldn't do it, and we think it's because consumers don't trust a super low price. Which is where I believe an opportunity for Wimstay exists and saying like, well, we're a brand where you can get a better deal, but it's coming with a different type of guarantee or message that the traveler is relating to and therefore trusting. When I was talking before about sort of the value of the say total dollars out of pocket, it was really focused on the traveler. And I think one of the things we, we've done well uh, now turning our attention to the property managers themselves is there are a number of reasons why that property manager is working for us outside of just the determination of the daily rate. For the most part, pro our PMC partners want to control as much of the guest experience as they can, capture more of the economics themselves, rent to awesome guests. Many want to decrease liability on those very, very, very last minutes. And most importantly, want to book more nights that may have stayed vacant. And we are a slightly more user-friendly partner in all of those regards. And when I think the property managers, one of the things I was also excited about when I joined the business is there wasn't really a lot of, lot of debate about the product market fit. In other words, every property manager that I talked to in the first four months at the company, you'll want exactly what we offer now. It's incumbent upon us to kind of build the product that solves the need, but they all wanted, at least in, in our small experience, uh, an alternative, more user-friendly uh, potential channel that is a little bit closely, you know, more closely tied to the property manager and the owner uh, versus the traveler, no, knowing that we need to try, you know, to provide value to both sides of the uh, equation. Uh, and so I think all of that factors into, again, not just the, the price and the discount, but how we present it to the traveler, what the property manager wants out of that equation and why they're continuing to use us because they, uh, it's our, you know, strong belief that they're using us for a whole number of reasons other than just, um, uh, Anybody really can put a discount on a property and try to, you know, sell that unit against another person at a lower price. 
we think we're adding a lot more value than just that piece of it, even though that piece of it is really, really important if, if, uh, if that makes some sense. Yeah, and, and, and I'm arguing that your, your brand value allows people not to have to discount properties as much. And that's actually, it's still a win for the consumer and win for the operator. And that's interesting because um, it's a, it's a, I, I'm just, I'm impressed. We, we, we have a, we have a large, I'm, I'm, and this is, this is kind of interesting. We have a really large percentage of our bookings that are at a 0% discount to, you know, the base price or the price, you know, the, the, the nightly rate but they're at a discount to the traveler on total stay. And I think our ability, that was one of the proof points for me is, you know, to the extent that we could do that, then, then we're really onto something um, outside of just, okay, if you give us a 20% discount, then we're going to sell that unit more than others. So, uh, you know, thanks for recognizing that app, but it's, it's a big part of our story. I, I, see, guys... I, see, um, I see Mike nodding along to a lot of those points. Do you want to come in on, on, well, yeah, come come in, come in really where you where you want to uh, contribute. No, no, it's okay. I, I, it's so I'm glad that this 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 part of the topic actually came up because it's super interesting. We uh, we did some testing uh, a couple of years back on the value of putting something like this in the headline, saying that you know twenty percent off last minute stays or something like that. Because as it may show it marked off on the site, and you see that and you recognize it when you actually see it in writing somewhere it's like that's the confirmation for people it's like okay yeah this is a better deal and like they said before you may not have to drop the rate maybe you feel like you're already at the floor at this point you know and it's like i can't i can't take any more hits than this just adding that little bit of value statement at the top and it's true in a sense i mean because you may set your 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 your, your red bar ceiling higher you know <laughs> and kind of play with it that way but at the end of the day a traveler is going to see that and be like okay well they've clearly thought through this they're clearly wanting to try to give me the best value. Therefore, they make that connection at the end of the day. So I just, that was just a really interesting point that Andrea brought up talking about how where the floors are really, where they stay, where you may not have to discount if you just make the experience and the story tell that this is a value for them to stay, you know? So anyways, I just, I wanted to point that out because it was something we had worked on a couple of years ago and we saw results out of even just writing stuff like that. And this takes it obviously a step further, so. And, and, you know, in terms of like pricing or discounts or other incentives when it comes to, um, you know, creating value around these sh short term booking windows, what, what are you seeing and maybe how is, is Wimstay supporting you with that? I mean, really, the best thing that you can do, I would say, out of the gate is make sure that travelers are going to, in a, in a nutshell, they're going to judge a book by its cover, period. OK, if you want them to get in there and start fooling around with the listing, it's got to look good out of the gate. It's got to say or it's got to have a photo that leads out of the out of the gate that looks really, really good. One thing that I've been really proud of Wednesday about and I've gone through and actually done my own investigative research myself because I like to keep up with our partners and see how they're doing um, is that they make sure that the value of either the photos or either or and the photos are good. The headlines are good. Um, or the first catchphrase or two out of the headlines grab you, you know, and that that's one of the most important things, especially when you're sitting in a macro search of stuff, right? You know, you know you're looking at 50 properties in Gatlinburg, extremely competitive market, one of the biggest drive to destinations. How do you pick, right, at the end of the day? And so they've done a pretty good job of going in and actually changing out the value of each stay so some some places that are just standard log cabins they might just put a really cheery picture of the inside area where the entertainment area is where people would sit and, and chat and things like that and that may be well and good enough for most people then there may be other people that are like i want that spa on the back deck overlooking the mountains boom that's the first photo that's showing up you know so it just changes the experience based on what people need um, so anyways, all that being said, the book by its cover approach, the photo, the thumbnail, those kinds of things, those that's like your starting point. Price is definitely in there, but it's like you're having to connect those two things before somebody will go, OK, boom, and click the button and get in and research further. It's so. such a part of what we do. And, and Andrew, back, you know, back to your point on, on the brand is definitely folks are are coming to us and associating those, these types of stays and bookings you know, with us. But the reality is we don't have a a widely known brand and there's a lot of people who don't know where we are and so we absolutely have to get these things right and better from what mike you're talking about on on what a user sees once they get to the site and um 
I, I really, before we move on to any uh, audience questions as well, I really want to delve a little bit into how Wimstay is working with partners in, in shorter booking windows. So uh, firstly, I'll come, I'll come to you, David, because you're perfectly positioned for this. How exactly are you working with um, your partners, uh, Wheelhouse, Inhabit, um, when it comes to you know, um, driving bookings and potentially maybe even some advice for people who are tuning in today as well? Well, one, I think we all complement each other very well and we work with each other uh, very well. We're a, we're a small company and have a lar you know, long and arduous road ahead. Inhabit is a really big, important company and have lots of large partners themselves. And so they don't have only been amazing about just allowing us to sell our services uh, to their customers, but, but really promoting the value prop that we bring to the table you know, at a high level in an appropriate fashion, because reality for us is we're kind of nowhere without the partners. And so Inhabit and other PMC and, and PMS partners have played a critical role in our ability to accelerate growth over this past year. And, you know, Andrew and his business um, do an amazing job on revenue management, but specifically what we do really do an incredible job of enabling us to provide the best value and the best returns to our collective set of customers. And we all play a part in maximizing um, occupancy and revenue. We all play a part in adding value operationally uh, in our own different ways. And we all play a part in enhancing guest experience uh, that I think takes all of the levers to kind of work together uh, on that one so that travelers can ultimately uh, seize the stay. Hopefully it's on Wimstay. <laughs> um, Andrew, your experience as a partner of Wimstay, how has it benefited your business at, at Wheelhouse? Well, I think I'm, um, so I work with, David and I are just friends, right? <laughs> yes. uh, when David- well, Apparently you're hired now as well. So you're totally an employee. I work for David, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so when David, um took over the as became the CEO at Wimstay, I was just fascinated with um I think David I reached out pretty early because I I just I love what you guys are doing. I love what you all are doing. And I think there's I think there's an inevitable inevitable shift towards shorter and shorter booking windows from a consumer perspective. I just think that's likely going to happen. And I think Wimstay has kind of a magical brand. So like I would say first and foremost, David and I have just spent a lot of time talking about the industry, et cetera. Um, and then, yeah, our teams are engaged in conversations about how we can leverage pricing information to help operators achieve the best price. And, and the guess is gonna win too, but there's, um, we think there's real magic to be made by partnering up some of what David's seen and some of some of the data insights that, that our team has. Um, so, I think that's safe to share now that both per personally and professionally, um, I am, we are very interested in what Wimstay is doing and feel lucky to play a small part in, in, in any of it. Um, Mike as well, a, a similar experience. Like, what would be your advice as well to, to people, other um, companies look, potentially looking for new partners like a, like a Wimstay? Yeah, sure, for sure. I mean, I can tell you that, you know, when I came in to build the partnerships sector for Inhabit la last year, one of the major focuses that we were looking for is, let's look for that niche. What are the things that people don't have right now? What's something that could, could move a dial in a different direction? I mean, we've, th this, this industry's more or less been established for about 15 years, more or less, right? And the technological piece is really kind of hit full steam about six, seven years ago, and it really just started ramping quickly. So you can get confused pretty quickly when you have the same products over and over and over being replicated, 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 replicated. So when you have things like, you know, a, a Wimstay or you have a wheelhouse that has like a, a niche version of what they, what they attack and approach, those are the things that become interesting. And they're the things where you can pull those levers where you weren't pulling before. And our team absolutely looks for niches. And also we have a client success team that we use in order to promote those niches as well, because you'll have clients that'll come back and go, okay, I'm on, you know, VRBO and I've got my personal website and I've got this and I've got that, but I'm still sitting at 52% occupancy. I need another option here. What am I missing? And these kinds of things make it really easy for our team to go like, well, have you tried Wednesday? Because they actually get in between the nooks and crannies of what you've already booked. Huh, I haven't really thought of that before. Boom. 
Now we have a connection. That's a success story for me. I mean, I would say for our team at the end of the day, we love making those connections and showing the value of something new and cool, right? And that's what these guys provide at the end of the day. So uh, I would say, uh, you know, if you're if you're a property manager out there and, you know, you've got your tech stack and you've got the things that you use and you rely on uh, from day to day and you're feeling that pinch of the ADR or its occupancy or whatever it is that you've got going on, obviously check your quality first. But at the same time, if that's not doing it for you, there's partners like this out here that can help you move that needle even farther. Thank you very much, Mike. Now we move on to the section where um, we get to hear from, from the audience and we've got lots of questions coming in. If you do have any more, please do uh, post them either in the chat function or the Q&A um, and uh, we'll get around to those before the end. Um, so the first question we've got uh, from Robert Neundorf. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and I guess this is best uh, directed to David. And it, the question is, does Wimstay connect through Rentals United? Yes, we do. Proud partner. So we should talk. <laughs> you heard him, uh, Robert. Thank another, you. another great partner of ours, yes. Fantastic. Um, we had a, a question from uh, an anon. Oh, yes, I submitted a request online. <laughs> OK, well, we do have uh, David's contact details as well. Uh, listed in the chat as well, Robert. So hopefully you'll you'll have the opportunity to, to talk after this as well. Um, we've had a question from an anonymous attendee saying, "What are you seeing in terms of fraud prevention and increase in fraud?" Does someone want to put their hand up or or just go straight into answering the question? I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy to start. Um, we are the merchant of record in. Um, in uh, for many of our uh, uh, PMC partners and bookings, we we have the ability for the PMC to be merchant of record if they like. It's a it's a crucial crucial part of any marketplace OTA business, uh, particularly in this sector. It's an even more crucial part of any uh, operator um, OTA marketplace who happens to be focused on last minute bookings. In a, my former life, I spent time at a payments company uh, focused on the travel sector and. 85% of our losses, you know, occurred in that last week. And really most were in that kind of three to four days prior to, and we had built a very sophisticated risk engine and, and controls in place. And so um, that theme of being ahead of where we should be at in fraud prevention and uh, chargeback management and all of those types of things uh, is really important to what we're doing. And we need to do those types of things in a, in a, in a uh, capital efficient way. And there's lots of things that we do together with our partners, with our part property managers, not just us that has this, these gates and are trying to do things with our payment prop partner and what we do on our side of the face, but there's an ongoing dialogue with our PMC uh, partners about what we're doing and what they're doing and, and what we can do to minimize, um, you know, fraud. Even if we are, we are taking the losses, no one wants to have a fraudulent transaction happen uh, in their ecosystem, you know, even if we are taking the loss. So it's a big focus there for us. And we've got a lot of rooms to improvement, but I think we do a decent job given the scale that we're at today. Uh, Andrew, Mike, either, either of you want to come in on that point? And concerning fraud prevention, basically, ultimately? Yeah. I'm still going down the list and reading all the questions here. So <laughs> can I we've get got quite there? a few coming in. So the, the more sure. questions, the better. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, having that peace of mind there is definitely become a big thing. I mean, part of that has to do with the news and, and things that have been going on. People sitting at home bored the last couple of years, you know, taking up new hobbies, so to speak, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, uh, and also, you know, you also have a, an injection of folks that are coming from the hotel industry that are now getting into the short-term industry because they're interested in it because of the privacy and all the things that came with the kind of the stigma of what happened during COVID and all that. So now they're just trying to make sure, okay, is my stay is safe, you know, here instead of booking through Bonvoy or one of the other ones that are out there right there, you know, and so just having that there first and foremost and making sure that that piece is there, it's just, it's a massive confidence builder. And to me, it puts some... Uh, on puts us on par with the residential slash hotel industry uh, when it comes to that experience and that confidence performance. That's really my two cents on it. I just saw Andrew's <laughs> Andrew's comments about saying says the guy with five guitars behind him. <laughs> I think we know what your hobby is there, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. I had to, but, um, had to well, slightly <laughs> call you out. No. <laughs> um, uh, we we also had a, a question from uh, Grant uh, Fawcett, 
Uh, thank you very much, Grant, for your question. And it says, uh, do you all feel the influx of short-term inventory into the marketplace has any correlation to booking window shrinking? Um, I might ask uh, Andrew this one first. Yeah, I, I wish I could answer that specifically. I mean, that that is yet another great contender for what's driving a shift in, in booking windows. Um, I don't know that it outweighs, you know, economy, shift in travel, uh, preferences or traveler types, uh, et cetera. I think it's among the mix of reasons why booking window is changing, but um, great. I can't answer that in a percentage or data-driven question, unfortunately. Uh, David, I guess this is- well, this <clears> it, seems as though, it seems as though booking windows have tightened for companies of all sizes with different types of property types and different types of regions at different types of price points. And so, and for us, it's just hard because we're, you know, we're still so relatively early in the curve and we're adding properties really fast um, uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a fairly rapid rate given to kind of our base that, um, and this is, this is, this is all we, this is all we do. It's kind of the only real lens, even though we do take bookings outside of that 30 day window, we haven't really done anything to promote it or do anything about it. They just kind of happen, um, on our, on our, on our platform. So I think it has a lot more to do with just pricing in general, uh, as an impact, uh, as opposed to the short-term window, but that's, you know, just a high level, high level view. If you swamp a market with more inventory than, you know, may have an impact on uh, your ability to get that booking made or at the price you wanted to uh, to get done at. But, um, but, Mike, want to add anything to that too? I was going to say, I think that that's why kind of that Im ambiguous uh, stat that's running around out there right now that says that, you know, you know, ADRs may be shrinking and, and, uh, and stays might be shrinking, but yet net bookings are increasing, right? Why? It's because you've, you've flooded the market full of inventory, right? So the same amount of bookings or more are coming through. You're just having to work with a much bigger pot at the end of the day. And so people are kind of sitting in that, on that, on that fence of going like, is the market really flowing the wrong direction? Or is there just so much more inventory here than what we used to have? And so now it goes back to that same story before, which goes down to the experience piece. You got to make your, you got to make your listings pop. You got to, you know, let them stand out, you know, in front of everything else in order to get that same amount of bookings or try and get back up to that same type of performance, you know, you were expecting to get right year on year. Um, so yeah, I don't think that it affects the booking window per se, at least from what we've seen, but it has definitely affected some of our bigger clients when they come in and they go, Hey, look, my bookings are down 20% year on year. And then we go, well, <laughs> and we go look at the market and there's been a thousand units added. So, okay. This stuff's getting, you know, you know, it's parsed out a little bit more than it was previously. Right. So at least that's been our observation from our end. Yeah. And, okay. and I, I had mentioned before that bookings for us are up 200% versus last year. But volume volume is only up about 120 percent, and so at least through our small lens, um, it's you know ADR has been reduced, and average booking value has gone down, um, uh, and that's really kind of the driver for us on <clears throat> on uh, the impact. Perfect. Um, we've had some comments uh, from Sarah Franzen. A revenue strategy is way more than pricing. Uh, a strong revenue strategy includes levering partnerships and knowing or at least forecasting how each will benefit. Um, Steph Hamlin, next stop is Wimstay launching in the UK and Europe, please, uh, purely from a personal perspective. <laughs> um, well, we know that you're going to be launching in, in Europe next year, so we're really looking forward to seeing a bit more about that. Um, got another question just coming in from Cheyen Granger. Is there data that correlates to the quality of guests with lower ADRs and shorter stays? Are guests still respecting the homes or have damages increased? Um, David, that'd be best for you. We, we don't we, we don't see or can't see any difference. And it might be that at, at the stage of, of our development, but um, you know, we don't see any particular pattern uh, to uh, you know when things go wrong in a stay, um, you know. People who uh, have means and have big groups can do bad things in a really nice home, uh, and vice versa. So we we don't we don't we don't see any pattern there. Certainly understand the um, the uh, uh, the concern uh, that folks have, uh, but we try to alleviate those concerns in in the booking process and what we do in the background. Okay, perfect. Um, I had another question come in right at the end, have we? Um, from Terry. Ah, uh, yes, yes, we know Terry well, uh, a judge for our awards. Um, so Terry asks, I have been a Wimstay client for many, many years with no reservations. 
what can you do about underperforming inventory? Uh, for, for us? Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that we really love to do that is, is also, I think, uh, unique versus some of the larger price, but we run targeted marketing campaigns for specific property managers. It could be for a specific region. It could be for specific properties. And so we do what we do <clears throat> on an overall basis to get users to come and book to our site. Uh, but we do quite a bit of just very targeted campaigns where we'll talk to a partner and they say, you know, we, you know, we're underperforming in, in Gatlinburg or Breckenridge or Cabo or whatever. Uh, and we'll, we'll dedicate resources to market that those specific properties for those specific property managers. And, uh, you know, it's not, you know, it doesn't, doesn't fully work a hundred percent of the time, but we feel that it's an added uh, value to, to property managers and, and, uh, the vast majority of the times we we see a pickup, a lift in, in activity when we do that. Uh, yeah, thank you very much to everyone who's asked a question. If you have got any more questions, um, there will be time um, after uh, the session. We have got uh, everyone who's participated in the webinar today. We've got all of their contact details in the chat, so please do contact them directly. Thank you again for everyone's questions. And of course, a big thank you to all of our contributors today to David, to Mike, and to Andrew. Um, we've got just a couple of quick slides to run through just before we finish, but um, ultimately uh, that's it for another series of short-term rentals webinars until the autumn at least. What a series it's been, plenty of sessions for you to go back and, and watch on shorttermrentals.com. Now we have a very exciting uh, exclusive op offer in partnership with Wednesday as well. You'll be able to save $100 on your next booking with Wednesday by entering the code, by simply entering the code STRZ, all in capitals, 100 at the checkout. So a big thank you to Wednesday for that offer and there'll be more information coming out in the post-show uh, email too. www.wimstay.com or download our app. Actually do both, that would be great. Perfect, you've done that before I think David. <laughs> So yes, you heard it all uh, there and uh, thank you very much to uh, Wednesday for that offer. Um, we've got two very big events coming up in London this year, starting next week with our exciting annual Urban Living Festival on the 5th and 6th of July, bringing together urban innovators and investors at the cutting edge of contemporary hospitality, real estate and living. So if you want to come along, please do contact me directly at my email. Again, that is in the chat, or you can book your tickets now at urbanlivingfestival.com. Hope to see uh, lots of you there. And uh, yes, it promises to be a fantastic event. And then on Wednesday, the 18th of October, something again that we're looking uh, very much forward to uh, as well. Also in London, we host our inaugural Short Term Rentals Summit in partnership with Skift. David was uh, also a speaker in, in New York as well. Uh, like like we at Short Term Rentals were. So we know the, the quality um, that these events will bring. It's going to be an incredible event. We've just un unveiled our event agenda as well. So the link to get your tickets is in the chat. And again, we also have a special £100 discount code for anyone buying two or more tickets. Hope to see you there in London on the 18th of October. For opportunities to work with us, please do contact my colleagues, Steph and Jordan, whose details are on screen for you now. Really, real pleasure to work with the uh, Wednesday team uh, on this session today, and a big thank you to them for sponsoring, to David for participating as well. This session will stay open for another two minutes for you just to jot down any details you want to from the discussion, and there's been plenty uh, discussed today. Do, of course, contact us via our various channels as well. Big thank you once again to all of our speakers and everyone who's tuned in today, and we'll see you all again very soon. Thank you very much, everyone.